Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Lois. I'm glad you called. Well, you'll have to give me a rain check, Angel. Some people are throwing a brawl and they insist I attend. Mm-hmm. If I'm not there to be the life of the party, they're going to be the death of me. Once again, Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves The Case of the Murdering Misses. It's early evening in New York, and in the shabby kitchen at the Belmore, a blonde named Laura McKenna prepares dinner for her man. But this is one meal neither of the McKennas are destined to eat. That you, Mac? Yeah. Oh, wait a second, honey. Hiya, doll. Take off your coat. Dinner will be ready in 20 minutes. Paul Newcomb, drop off a package for me? Yeah, it's on the table. Mm-hmm. Mac. Ain't it a beauty? Hey, where'd that gun come from? Borrowed it from Paul. I'm going back in business. No. Yeah. Paul saw a good thing on 84th Street, a jewelry shop run by a fellow named Vance. And he talked you into heisting it? He could have gotten a hundred guys. I won't let you do it. Don't talk like a jerk. I jur- mean it, Mac. If anything happened to you... Nothing's going to happen. A kid could handle this job. That's what you said in San Francisco before they sent you up. Well, it was an accident. Couldn't happen again. Well, we're not going to find out. Well, what do you suggest? There's eight bucks left in the kitty. We'll get by. I don't want us to just get by. How do you think I feel when I see dames who don't have half your looks parading around with furs and diamonds? Do you hear me complaining? I'm satisfied. Well, I'm not. You're not going to do it, Mac. Let Paul get himself another boy. Look, that's enough. The discussion's over. No, it's not. If you step out that door, so help me, I'll call the cops. What did you say? <laughs> I'm sorry, baby. No, you were right, Mac. I didn't mean what I said. You know, if anything happened to I know, you, I... I know. Don't worry, I'll be back in an hour. Let me go with you. It'll be easier with the two of us. No, no. You're afraid. No, I'm not afraid, but you'd only be in the way... Give us a kiss for luck, baby. I'm off to work. I'm terribly sorry, sir, but we're closed for the night. Oh, come on, mister. Give me a break, will you? It's my girl's birthday. But I've put all my stock away. Well, how long would it take you to open your safe? I saw an engagement ring in your window this afternoon that was just perfect. An engagement ring? Yeah, it was marked $850. dollars you would be crazy about it. Well, in that case... Thanks a lot, Mr. Vance. If you'll just wait a minute. Sure. Do you, uh, you happen to remember how much it weighed? One and a half carats. One and a half, hmm? Suppose I wanted something bigger, say, uh, about four. Oh, I'm sure we can accommodate you. Now, here we are... Now, if you just look over this tray... Yeah, but why don't I do it at home? What? All right, Vance, keep your hands in the showcase. This is a heist. But really... Just keep you... them where they are. You're making a grave mistake, young man. Now, if you listen to me, you... What's that? I, I, I don't know. You don't know. Aren't you the cute when you stepped on the alarm? Uh, no. You couldn't leave well enough alone. you fellas. Let's hurry it up and get out of here. Myers, be sure you get a shot of the showcase. Greetings, men. Oh, no. Wouldn't you know it? Well, the little Sergeant Pulaski. Where's Corbett? He's lucky. He's got a day off. What are you doing here, Waring? I represent the insurance company. Well, fellas, we can all go home now. The Falcon is on the case. Oh, you better stick around, man. You might learn something. What have you got, Steve? Darn little... What about Vance? He died an hour ago. Tough. Did he talk before he went? Not much. Here's a description of his killer. Blonde hair, blue eyes, five foot nine. Small mole on right cheek, V-shaped scar on left wrist. V-shaped scar, that's funny. What's so funny about it? 
Sounds like a boy I used to know in San Francisco. Well? Well, it couldn't be him. Last I heard, Mac was serving five to ten of San Quentin. Mac who? Mac McKenna. What made you think it's him? That scar. He got it in the knifing. But it couldn't be the same one. Couldn't it? Suppose I told you that Mr. McKenna is now guesting in our fair city. He's what? He got it from a stoolie last week. He's living with his wife at the Belmore. Oh, no, it sounds too easy. Well, I'm going to pick him up just for luck. Come along and see how it's done. That you, Paul? Yeah. All right, wait a minute. Hello, Mac. Hey, what the... Uh... No, I can't say I do. The name is Waring. We met on the coast some years back. So? So, now that we've got me identified, I'd like you to meet Sergeant Steve Pulaski here. That yeah, looks like you were right, Steve. Looks like. What are you babbling about? Steve got a rumble. You were in town, and I thought it was impossible. Last I heard, you were still in San Francisco. I didn't like the climate. Yeah, I don't think you'll like New York's any better, particularly around 84th Street. Come again? A jewelry shop up there was heisted last night, and the proprietor was killed. I don't know anything about it. Uh, and how do you account for the fact that Steve found your fingerprints on the showcase? You're crazy. Why? You wore gloves? Oh, you're nuts. Wait a minute, I'll prove it to you. Watch him, Sergeant. Hold it, boy. I just wanted to get my coat. Don't strain yourself. Get it, Mike. You bet. Well, what have we got here? What is it, a thirty-eight? Yeah. And it's been fired recently. All right, Sergeant, since Mac is so fond of jewelry, let him try your bracelets for size. Hey, McKenna. What do you want? You got company. Mac. Hiya, Laura. You're going to have ten minutes. Let me look at you. How are you, honey? Might change much? I'm going to get you out. Hmm. You got a file in your bag? I'll work it somehow. I'll get the best lawyer. Ah, no. Save your money, baby. But if I hire... The... Look, Laura, I never kidded you for a minute. I'm a going gosling. No. We got to face the facts, baby. They got me dead to rights. They got my gun. Someone ratted. No. Nope. It was Paul. Nothing of the kind. It was a fluke. You remember Mike Waring? The private detective they call the Falcon? Mm-hmm. Well, it seems that he represents the insurance company. He got lucky. He saw the description Vance gave, and he thought of me. It couldn't happen that way. No, but it did. I don't believe it. Oh, I got a feeling, Paul... Look, forget it. Paul had nothing to do with it. It was Mike Waring. Well, I'll pay him back for this. Hmm? I'll get him for you, Mac, if it's the last thing I do. Now, don't talk like a I jerk. tell you, I'll get him. How? Don't ask me, but I'll manage it some way. That you can depend on. You're wasting your time, mister. Huh? Mr. Waring ain't in. Well, that's a nice how do you do. I was supposed to meet him here. Are you Sergeant Pulaski? That's right. Well, he told me to give you this note. Yeah. Dear Steve, sorry I had to rush off, but the insurance company wanted to see me on the Vance Heist. Eddie, the elevator boy, will let you in. There's a bottle in my desk. Help yourself. You Eddie? Yeah, that's right. Got a pass key, or do I use mine? Are you sure it'll be all right with Mr. Waring? Yeah, look for yourself. Eddie, I'll let you in. I guess it's okay. Hey, are. Thanks a lot, Eddie. You've been a great... <gasps> Sergeant! Sergeant! Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Three hours have passed since Sergeant Steve Pulaski was killed while entering Mike Waring's apartment. And now at the scene of the crime. All right, Doc, you can move the body anytime you want. Mind if I take a peek first, Sergeant? Oh, no, he ain't going to tell you anything, Mike. 
Well, whoever did it wasn't taking any chances. They were probably standing right by that closet. Yeah, yeah. The minute the door opened, they fired. Now, that's what your elevator boy said. Did Eddie get a peek at the killer? Oh, I haven't talked to him yet. Well, what are we waiting for? Eddie! You want me, Mr. Waring? Yeah, come over here. I don't feel so good. Well, I don't blame you. Oh, you should have seen it, Mr. Waring. It was awful. Every time I think of it, Oh, I... don't. You better give him a drink. Yeah. Here you are, Eddie. Uh, I don't want it. Come on, come on. This is good for what ails you. <coughs> now, tell me exactly what happened. Well, I... I just opened the door for him and he walked in. Then there was the shot. Now, go on. That's all I remember. Didn't you see anyone in here? No, I just ran down the hall and got Dr. Wilbur. All I could think of was getting help. Oh, please, Mr. Wayne, can I go now? Yeah, all right. I- I'll be downstairs if you want me. <laughs> he was a great help. He did the best he could. Corbett, I can't tell you how sorry I am about this. If I had been here... You would have gotten it instead. Yeah, I guess so. Who do you know that loves you this much? Offhand, I can't think of a soul. Come on, Mike, use your head. You must have annoyed someone recently. Well, I do that once a week. Well, one of them took it real personally. Uh, the only one who comes to my mind is Mac McKenna. McKenna? I was representing the insurance company in that Vance jewelry stick-up, and when Steve described the killer, I thought of McKenna as a suspect. But do you think Mac... Uh, how, by mental telepathy? You got him tucked away, safe and sound? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you got any of that stuff there? Yeah, here it is. All right, thank you. <laughs> Boy, some collection. Look at this, a billfold with eight bucks. A badge, service revolver, and a pair of bracelets. Ain't much. <laughs> Wish some of those newspaper boys who keep yapping about crooked cops could see this. Uh, what'd Steve want to see you about? Don't if I know, Corbett. He called me from headquarters this morning and set up the date. Any idea what it was? Nope. He didn't want to discuss it on the phone. I got a hunch it was personal. Reminds me. What? Somebody's got to break the news to Mrs. Pulaski. What? You mean Steve was married? Yeah. Just a month ago. Oh, fine. Well, who's going to tell her? You. Oh, now listen, Corbett. Come on, Mike. It's the least you can do. After all, that bullet was intended for you. Okay, Sergeant. I'd rather have stopped that slug than do this. I got a feeling this will be just as bad. Just a second. Mrs. Pulaski? Yes? My name is Mike Waring. Oh, of course. Steve often speaks of you. Won't you come in? Thank you. Uh, Steve isn't home right now, but I expect him any minute. Oh, I suppose I should apologize for the looks of this place. Oh, no. It's... I guess I'm not much of a housewife, but I'll learn. Yeah, sure you will. Now, look at me yucking away like crazy. Here, let me take your coat. No, please, uh, don't bother. I, I can't stay long. Well, aren't you going to wait for Steve? Well... He'll be awful disappointed if he missed you. Look, Mrs. Pulaski, there's something I have to tell you. What? Now, you've got to understand... Steve was a cop, and in his business... What do you mean, Steve was a cop? Here, you better sit down. What happened to him? Look, Mrs. Pulaski... He's been hurt. Well... Is that it? Yes. Well, where is he? I gotta go see him. Well, you can't. What do you mean, I can't? I'm his wife. Well, I know that, but you see... What are you trying to tell me? He's dead. Oh, no. No, I don't believe it. I'm sorry. He can't be. It was my fault indirectly. You see, the killer was trying to get me. Oh, Steve. (laughs) Steve, I... No, no, Mrs. Pulaski, you've got to be brave. Steve would want you to be. Brave? I never wanted him to be a cop if he'd listened to me. Well, he couldn't have been anything else. He was cut out for the job. He liked it. Oh, Oh, please, let me alone. Well, can I get you anything? No. Look, if it makes you feel any better, I promise you I'll get the responsible party. Will that bring Steve back? Well, I I just want you to know... I know that my husband's dead. That's enough for me. Now go away and leave me alone. More 
coffee, Mike? No, I've had enough. How'd it go? Bad. Say, do you know if Mrs. Pulaski has any relatives? Uh, Not as far as I know. (laughs) Well, I wonder what she's going to do. She doesn't look like a girl who's used to working. Well, with Steve's insurance and the money from the police pension fund, she'll do all right. I hope so. So help me, Corbett. If it's the last thing I do, I'll get him. If I don't get him first. Say, wait a minute. Huh? Why do we keep saying him? Huh? We keep referring to the killer as a him. Couldn't it be a woman? Well, you ought to know. The her or him was after you. Look, can you think of any dame you loused up recently? What about McKenna's wife? Huh? As I recall, she was very devoted to Mac. So? So she might feel I was responsible for putting him away. This could be her way of balancing the books. Oh, you're nuts. Yeah, well, there's one way to find out. I'm going up to see her. I'll let you know how I make out. <laughs> Yes. Mrs. McKenna? That's right. I'd like a word with you. I'm busy. You can't be that busy. Now, look, mister, I don't know who you are. Why not ask me? Frankly, I don't care. My name is Mike Waring. Mike Waring? Why, you dirty... take it easy. Behave yourself. Let me go. Will you behave? Let go. (laughs) I imagine you're pretty surprised to see me. Am I? Yes. You killed the wrong boy. It was a police sergeant named Steve Pulaski. You're crazy. Doesn't the fact that I'm alive convince you? I don't know what you're talking about. Look, you're crazy about Mac. When you felt I was instrumental in nailing him, you wanted to get even. And I will. No, no, you won't, Laura. In this league, you get one chance. You muffed yours. Now get your coat. We're going places. Well, what do you have to say for yourself, Laura? Nothing. Oh, then you admit you killed Sergeant Pulaski. I admit nothing of the kind. You tried to gun me, and when Steve walked in, you didn't ask for credentials. You just blazed away. I'm not doing any more talking. Well, well, you'll change your mind. How would you like to see your husband? Huh? I asked if you'd like to see Mac. Could I? If you cooperate. All right, I'll tell you anything you want to know. You were going to kill Waring. That's right. Now, can I see Mac? So you got into his apartment. Huh? You got into his apartment. Yeah, yeah, I did. How? My door was locked. I used the fire escape. I put you in my bedroom? Yeah. Now, can I see Mac? No. Well, you promised me. I promised you you'd see him if you'd cooperate, but you're not. How did you get into my apartment? I told you, through the fire escape. At least to the kitchen. You got me mixed up. I meant the kitchen. What about the window there? It was open. No, it wasn't. I distinctly remember shutting it before I left. I want to see Mac. Well, what do you say, Mike? Okay. Lois, take Mrs. McKenna down to see her husband and then lock her up. Thanks a lot, Sergeant. You won't regret this. Well, can you beat that? She means it. Yeah, she's really mad for the guy. Yeah, she must be to pull that silly stunt. Listen, Corbett, I want you to do me a favor. Release her. Are you nuts? You don't have to worry. She won't skip. McKenna will hold her like a magnet. What's the idea? Because I got a hunch I want to test, and without Mrs. McKenna on the loose, I can't. Oh, you and your hunches. Well, I don't think she's telling the truth. She admitted trying to get you. I know that, but there's something about this that bothers me. Well, you won't be satisfied till she does kill you. All right, then you can say I told you so. Now, what do you say, Corbett? Well, okay. But if it doesn't pay off, I'll have your heart. With a little A1 sauce, it ought to be real tasty. Yes? Mrs. Pulaski? Yes? This is Mike Waring. How do you feel? How do you think I feel? Well, I'm sorry. I only called to tell you that we've finally got a line on Steve's murderer. So? So wouldn't you like to know who it was? Will that bring Steve back? Well, I suppose you're right. Still, I thought you'd be interested. You see, this party was trying to kill me, and I figure she'll try again. What do you mean? Well, I believe this woman is motivated by revenge. 
Now, if I'm right, Steve's death doesn't satisfy her. Only mine will. That's how we plan to nab her. What do you think? It doesn't matter what I think. All I know is that Steve is gone. Now, let me alone. Now, show me exactly what happened when Sergeant Pulaski came here this afternoon. Well, the first I saw him, he was banging on your door. He looked kind of uh, upset because you weren't in. That's when you gave him my note? Yeah. Then he told me you said it was all right for him to wait inside. Mm -hmm. Where were you standing at the time? Uh, Right about uh, here. All right, go on. So I pulled out my pass key and opened the door. Show me how. You mean you want me to go through the whole thing again? Mm Mm-hmm. I guess Steve was uh, here. Uh Uh-huh. All right, now open the door like you did. That's how it was. Then just as he stepped into the room... Mr. Waring! Mr. Waring! Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Twenty minutes have passed since Mike and Eddie attempted to reenact the murder of Sergeant Steve Pulaski. Unfortunately, the effect was almost as dramatic. All right, all right, Mike. Now take a swig of this. What what happened? You tell me. You were here. Well, I guess I... Hey, that shoulder's going to be stiff for a week. Never mind. Let me... No, 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 no. You just stay there till the doc comes. I'm all right. Well, who was it? You asked me. Well, didn't Eddie... Eddie did exactly what he did the first time. He ran off to get help. Then he didn't see who fired the shot. No. Oh. Yeah, I guess it's true about people repeating their mistakes. So I get myself plugged for nothing. Well, it's your own fault. I told you Mrs. McKenna was her baby. Yeah, looks like you were right. Well, I'm going to put out a call for her. Wait a minute, Sergeant. I just thought of something. What's the matter? You want to give her another chance? No, I tell you, I've got it all figured out. I know we can nail the killer for sure. How? Look, I'm going to need a little help. Where's my coat? Now, now, don't be silly. You're in no condition to travel. I'll survive, which is a lot more than I can say for Steve's killer. Now, get my coat. Yes? Hello, Mrs. Pulaski. Remember me? Mr. Waring, what happened? My shoulder? Oh, it's nothing. Yeah, yeah, this happens practically once a week. (laughs) Oh, this is Sergeant Corbett. Oh, yes, I know. I I can't tell you how sorry I am about Steve, Mrs. Pulaski. May we... Of course. Thanks. I suppose I should apologize, Mr. Waring. What for? Well, I wasn't very courteous when you called. Oh, that's understandable. You're under a strain. Have you made any progress? Yes, plenty. Why do you think I'm wearing my arm in a sling? I I don't understand you. Well, the killer took a shot at me. But I was luckier than Steve. Oh, then you know who it was. I think so. We even got a confession. I'm glad you mentioned that, Sergeant. Because I told you there was something about it that bothered me. Well, now I know what it was. Yeah? What? There's a phony... Laura McKenna only made it so she could see her husband. I don't understand. Well, you see, Mrs. Pulaski, originally we thought this was a plot to kill me that misfired. So we went around looking for people who disliked me. That's how we came up with Mrs. McKenna. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, let's consider the actual result in the case. Now, who was the victim? My husband. Mm-hmm. Well, suppose it wasn't an accident at all. Suppose someone was really after Steve. You see the possibilities? No. Well, then we come up with a different uh, group of suspects. You remember the personal effects they found on his body? Yes, there was a wallet with eight dollars, a badge and a gun. Mm -hmm. Well, doesn't it strike you that there was something missing? No. Well, what happened to his skeleton keys? What are you talking about? They weren't on his body. Shall I tell you why? Because the killer used them to get into my apartment... The killer knew that Steve was headed there to see me. Now, who would have had the best opportunity to know of that appointment and to lift the keys? Who? You. 
What? Yes. You were real clever, Angel, but you made one mistake. And in this game, that's enough to put you away. All right, Corbett. Prove it to her. Get over it. <laughs> when I think it was Mrs. Pulaski... Well, that's who it was, Sergeant. But why, Mike? Well, she had big financial ideas. Uh, oh, you mean she knocked Steve off for his insurance? Mm-hmm. It was as simple as that. What complicated the deal was that we thought I was supposed to be the victim. That's why she made that second attempt. That was calculated to make us all the more certain that Steve was killed accidentally. Oh, uh, you know, it's a funny world. Mm-hmm. Here we had two wives, one married to a crook and the other to a cop. And the crook's wife would have given her life for her husband. And the cop's wife took his. Yeah. Well, fortunately, it very seldom happens that way. But it all goes to prove one thing. Uh, what? Marriage may be a great institution, but in some cases it can be murder. Good night, Sergeant. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake. Produced and transcribed by Bernard L. Schubert, written today by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Les Damon starred as the Falcon with Chuck Webster as Sergeant Corbett. This program came from New York. Fred Collins speaking. (laughs) 